Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, January 14th, 2024. Yes, I did not screw up the year. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Hidden Terminal Link, episode number 725. And Breezy. Yes, it's very cold out. Although, you know, I forgot to check the temperature there. I'm curious to see what the temperature is in Las Vegas. Because that, dear listeners and viewers, is where Damon is. He is away on vacation with his lovely husband. I don't recall if this is officially the honeymoon, but they are on a lovely vacation out there. Um, no, 56 today. So, yeah, brisk. For Vegas, but not as cold as where Jeff and I are. And and the thing is, I think I'm more south than he is. <laughs> True, you are. <laughs> so yeah, but fortunately, being a Minnesotan, I'm uh, well prepared for for cold weather. In the meantime, someone else who's probably freezing his butt off uh, over in the Northeast, mm-hmm. Dr. Edward and Angelina Cook. Yay! Hey. Hi. Welcome back, Ed. Thanks. And we have a little celebration that you don't know anything about, and neither does Jeff, because oh. I'm just full of surprises. Do you know what today is? The third time that we're talking about this topic? <laughs> uh, besides that. Okay. I don't know. Ed, this is your 30th landscape of relationships episode <gasps> oh Wait, wow we've done 30 lors we have done well yes depending on how you want to look at it and here's why so we started landscape of relationships with ed in november of 2019 so we have been doing this now for over four years wow and this is our 30th episode in the entire like series but it wasn't a series initially when we started and we called it Landscape of Relationships for a long time uh, for 11 episodes. And then we started calling them LORs. So, and this is your Baker's Dozen episode as Dr. Edward Angelini Cook. Oh, wow. That's, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. So, congrats. We've reached oh, a milestone. Thanks. I love milestones. And it... And it... <laughs> And I can definitely say is Gary, nerd. Hey, well, here's the thing. I was thinking about this. I was like, gosh, how many times has Ed been on? And I was like, and, and I know, I think on YouTube, Jeff, you've made an LOR playlist, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. Yes. So there, people can easily get all of the Landscape of Relationship episodes kind of in like one thing. Um but I was like, oh, I don't know like where else I would know that. So on our matrix spreadsheet, I made a whole new tab for LTA, you know, fill in the blank as a category because that's a different series or set of series and then LOR. And that's what prom- prompted this. So I was like, wow, look at that. Magic that's amazing. 30. 30. Wow. That's like, so. that's big. As Jeff alluded to, this is our third go round <laughs> on the subject. 
<laughs> to explain, uh, for those that don't know, we had two prior episodes that were not landscape of relationships where we talked about adulting. Um, and one so... of them, which was a very, 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 very good discussion between Gary and myself, just the two of us. It was a great conversation. Except my side of the conversation was never recorded. <laughs> so we decided when we discovered at the end of it that it wasn't that it didn't have Jeff's audio in it to just put it out anyways and didn't do a proper preface and thought the tongue in cheek like synopsis would give away that we were aware that it was a one sided conversation because that's exactly the wording I put into the synopsis did not work. People were like, hey. Uh, there seems to be something wrong. We can't hear Jeff. <laughs> I was like, to be so fair, then... to be fair, I said I'm thinking about not putting up this episode, and then Gary says, "Put it up anyways," and I'm like, "Okay." Well, because it's like, come on, we've been doing this thing for so many years now. Like, we have definitively improved over the years, but. I thought it was like kind of funny to just put out a poop episode. <laughs> like, it's like, well, it April happens. Fools in November. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we revisited the topic when Damon was available to join us. So there, there was three of us. Uh, and we discussed that at the end of last year. And then we were like, why don't we bring Ed in on this uh, and discuss it from the LOR perspective? So here we are. Mm -hmm. So Ed, what do we have to um, say about adulting? Well, um, you know, the one thing that um, I think is important to, you know, so in the concept, in the, you know, with the, the topic of, or the, you know, this series that we have, Landscape of Relationships, right? Like, we're talking about all relationships. So relationships with, you know, romantic relationships, relationships with, um, you know, work, family, stuff like that. But like also, um, it seems like we've been on this kick of like relationships with ourselves, um, and you know, part of that um, is adulting. And I had a conversation with a colleague of mine um, where we were kind of going over stuff we wanted to do for 2024. And my colleague was like, you know, like there's something that I have to do that I just, I, I just don't want to do it. And I have a lot of fear about it. Like I'm going to get it wrong. And I was like, wait, you too. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought that like, I was literally the only one who um, had the same reaction to these things. Um, so it felt really good to know that like, I'm not alone in that. Um, and these are, you know, like compliance things. Well, um, I'm glad that you said that, Ed, because I will admit there has been something of late that I have basically been avoiding. <laughs> um, and I knew the whole time at one, I was avoiding it. Two, I was creating my own anxiety. And like it was manifesting in several ways for me. And the whole time I was having this like inner turmoil because I know how to resolve it. I know <laughs> what the cause is, and yet I am not <laughs> taking responsibility or doing what needs to be done. Um, and like it, it was to the point where I was just literally saying to myself, like, this will not go away. Like, like this will it like it will resolve itself in some fashion, but maybe you should really just suck it up. Yeah. Anyways. And, and so I think that's a, a definitive example of what like adulting can be like. There are times when you're like, you really just want to stick your fingers in your ears and be like, la, 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 la. Like, you know, and you just want to ignore it. La, 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 Yeah. Yeah, you just don't want to do it. You're like, nope. Well, so I thought, uh, like, I went online and I looked at, like, you know, because, like, adulting is, like, a relatively – newer term in our vernacular right like what is the definition of adulting and you know it said that it's um the characteristic of being or uh sorry the characteristic of behaving in a way characteristic of a responsible adult um especially the accomplishments of mundane but necessary tasks and i think that is the important part here is like you know I think the thing with adulting is we're not going to get that like pat on the back. 
like at a boy um, mm. from adulting, right? Like nobody's going to do that for us, right? Like you know, you I know that uh, you know there's like that idea of um, you know, oh, so you you did your taxes, congratulations, <laughs> right? Like you're supposed to. Um, but like, you know, these are like mundane tasks. Like we, like, we don't want to do it. And the thing that I kind of want to talk about is you kind of mentioned this concept of avoidance, like us avoiding these mundane, but necessary tasks. Um, because, you know, sometimes that can bring with it a huge, like a huge slew of consequences. Um, if we don't, you know, not avoid them. Well, and I want to say this, like, I hear you on the mundane but necessary tasks. I think there are also some significant things that are not necessarily mundane that are also definitively in the realm of, like, adult responsibility. Because no no youth would have those things necessarily, I guess, is, is kind of the way I think of it. Which is really intriguing because I was just going to say, like... To me, a mundane task that someone might consider adulting but isn't, based on the definition, is like brushing your teeth. Because like mm -hmm. brushing your teeth is a mundane task, and yet like that's in, in theoretically instilled when you're much younger to carry on and carry forward. Whereas like paying bills, paying the rent or the mortgage, <laughs> like you know, yeah. utilities, those type of things. That's not necessarily responsibilities when you're younger and you do that when you get older, um, you know, going to work. Imagine that, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, calling off, following the proper procedures if you're not going to be available for work. Those type of things, I think, are all within the realm. Well, I think that this brings up like a really good um, point about um, so are we saying that this definition is um, limiting or, you know, like it's limited. I, I, I'm kind of with you, Gary, that I think that some of the things that I would classify as adulting are not mundane. Um, like, uh, buying a house, uh, you know, like doing, buying a car, right. Um, like these are things that are, um, can be like really, you know, the, uh, I mean, challenging, right? Um, and we're not always given the skills of what, but I think that, like the other thing that I'm thinking is, um, so that definition brought up the, uh, um, the idea of a responsible adult. So like, what even is that? Mm. Yeah, I mean, that that's one of the key things is, you know, uh, I guess it becomes debatable or up for grabs to what is a responsible adult versus what is an irresponsible adult. Um, and I think that comes under the purview of what does society view said actions as. Mm -hmm. You know, because like leaving your child at home to go to the, you know, fast food place to grab dinner and come back, some people would review would view as irresponsible and others would say, I don't know if I'd call it irresponsible or responsible. Um, you know, there, there's a lot to be considered as terms as factors. And the reason why I say that is we just had an exercise at work as a sidebar. <laughs> and we were we were asked at the start of a meeting to like participate in this thing, which I was greatly annoyed by. Uh, because there was like no context and I felt like kind of put in the spotlight and it seemed like there was a lot of pressure on me to like do this thing. And I was paying attention to the words and it was like, if you would like to, and I wasn't liking to, so I wasn't doing it. And I think it was kind of like frustrating the person that was leading the activity. And what I didn't do, which I could have done, which probably would have been more responsible as an adult is say, I do not want to participate, <laughs> but I'm in a room of my peers and I don't really like, I was like, if you can't pick up the awkwardness of this, I don't know what to tell you. Like, my nonverbals are already trying to tell you, no, this is not happening. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason why I bring that up is because it was like a strange peer pressure environment. And it's like, what is my responsibility? And as an adult in a professional place, what would I, what should I be doing? 
mm-hmm. you know, and I would, would I don't know if I would necessarily call it responsible adulting to to kind of pretty much nearly demand other people to participate in something, especially when they didn't know it was going to happen or weren't prepared for it or whatever. Anyways. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think kind of one of the things that I got from that is um, uh, that, you know, from like your perspective, though, like, you know, some of that is something that you had control over, right, is, um, you know, I could have set boundaries, <laughs> right, and, and just said, like, hey, I don't want to do this. Um, and the the other thing um, is when it comes to, like, being a responsible adult, that it is, like, contextual and that it's individual and that it's um, dependent upon each individual's um, idea of what responsible is and i think that is a direct reflection of the values that we hold about um uh, being a person in society right no i think that's fair and that, and that's i think that's why this concept of like being a responsible adult is nebulous which is to say it doesn't have good def- definition out the gate because it's about perspective you and i may see opposite about a particular thing that someone puts on the table and says, well, do you think this is a responsible adult action or an irresponsible adult action? And my point is that I was getting to is I couldn't really participate in the, in the activity because I had way too many questions and the activity Mm. was like built on this premise of like black or white. Like it, it was, it was definitive. So it was like, here are these 10 things. That's it. Like, and that's all you had to go on. And I was like, nope (laughs) like (laughs) i have too many questions like what about this what about that and i wasn't going to do that in the room i wasn't going to make this person who created the activity i wasn't going to put them in a spotlight and potentially make them uncomfortable and make it weird for everybody in the room because i in theory some might view it as like i'm tearing them down Mm -hmm. like or, or try to pick apart their thing and i knew that this was kind of meant to be for fun say reluctantly because i didn't find it fun um so yeah there's that well then i think it becomes a consent issue thank you i'm not consenting to this oh my god that was the revelation now i know why i was so upset about it i did not consent to this i just walked into a meeting this is not part of a meeting i mean it is but not really was it on the agenda didn't know it was going to happen that that was my issue thank you it was such clarity like because i was like why was i so bothered by that oh right because you didn't ask my permission. You just like kind of deemed it was a thing that was going to happen. Anyways. Right. Um, again, like, you know, uh, you're not, uh, or, you know, they were not looking at your boundaries. Um, right. And know, so I like, the option I, to, like, yeah. I, I tried really hard at that moment to be the most professional avoidant <laughs> anyone had ever seen. <laughs> so, th- so that kind of, um, so like, what is, you know, so when we're talking about like adulting and one of the barriers that I know that I experience when it comes to adulting is avoidance. Um, uh, and so like, what, what is your definition of what avoidance is? I would say ignoring a known thing that requires something. I just had this like image of Jada Essence Hall. Look over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. For those that know that reference from RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, to me, though, that's diversion. Mm-hmm. Like it, it is a it is a it is a method of avoidance, but that but it, the tactic is diversion, like to to draw attention elsewhere. But I feel like, yeah, I feel like it's 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 a knowledge, a comprehension that there is a thing that requires something, but you're not doing that. Yeah. Uh, yep. You know, I think the same, right? Just, uh, it's like the game of keep away, right? Um, you know, there's there's something that you have uh, in your mind agreed to do, um, and you're doing everything but that. Um, 
So, you know, this is something that I deal with with my clients all the time. And, you know, like I said, also with me. So, you know, I have a lot of uh, a lot of conversations about avoidance. And one of the things that comes up often is um, this like greater concept of experiential avoidance, um, which is kind of like what you said before about that meeting, right? Like, I'm not willing, like, you know, when there's something that we like, understand that like, we probably should do, and I use the word should in like quotations. um, But like, I'm so uncomfortable and unwilling to like, uh, stay present with these feelings (laughs) of discomfort and these like, thoughts that I'm having or like these emotions that are coming up um, that like I'm willing to do anything else other than experience what I'm experiencing right now. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Um, And what I really like about it is the idea that like there is so much relief that we get, like that is the thing that keeps it going. uh, That makes the avoidance continue to happen is that like, there is this experience of relief that comes with not doing anything. Do you want an example? I'm well, I'm puzzled because in my experience, the avoidance begets more problems. You're, yeah, um, or, that is... or anxiety or like, I don't know, like, you know, possibly panic, like, you know, or adverse outcomes, I guess. So that's where I'm like, I'm like, I don't I don't understand the relief <laughs> piece of it. Well, it's temporary, right? So like, um, you know, by us not doing anything, there's like this other, you know, have you ever heard somebody say um, short term benefit? Um or what is it? Um, you know, sometimes when we do something, there's like a short-term benefit, but like long-term pain. Mm. Right? Like I'm going to feel good at like, you know, quick, right? I think about like, I frame this like with like addiction or or alcoholism, right? That like it feels good for the moment, but like it just, you're delaying your own pain. It's fair. Um, so like, to your point though, that, um, the comfort comes with the relief that I don't have to do that thing. That's really painful. Right. Um, and, but like, that's like the story that we have made up in our mind and that we're really fused with, um, we're really like close with that. Like, this is going to be, um, like really painful. I don't want to I don't want to do the painful thing, so I'm going to do something else. And the the example that I usually give people is, you know, there's a lot of people that I know that have, like, social anxiety. And um, the idea of being around people um, is, you know, painful for them. So, like, you know, they get invited to a party. Um, they have said, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. But as the party gets closer, they, their anxiety starts to get louder the stories that they're telling themselves about the party get, get louder. Um, and to the point where both like, you know, however long before the party, they're like, I'm not going, I'm not going. Um, and then they, they decide not to go. And then they feel this like wave of relief that they don't have to, they don't have to experience all of that. Um, but then they don't go, but then they hear stories right, from other people like, oh, my God, you'll never guess who is there. You'll never guess that guy that I hooked up with, <laughs> right, um, and all these things. And then they're like, damn it. And then they have that fear of missing out or that that experience of missing out. Um, uh, so, like, you know, was it really worth it um, to, like, not go? Um, and then over time, the our, – our mind, our, our brain – Mm -hmm. is more conditioned to listen to the relief than it is to the pain. Right. So like our, our mind is like, Hey, not going is feels better right away. Um, so, you know, we are, you know, our mind is like, Oh, that's, that's the easier choice. 
Right, because I think we, our brain interprets the avoidance as a reward. Yep. Hmm. So, um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, so that is, um, yeah, I deal with that a lot. Um, and I've dealt with that um myself um you know in various situations even with uh you know um like going back to school was something that i was just like terrified to do um because i was you know so scared of what was going to happen that i just never did it um and then it was just like, oh, I'm just going to do one thing, which led into all the other stuff. But, um, yeah, that that idea of um, the avoid. Oh, the other thing I was going to say is um, the more that we listen to that part of us, like the more that we seek that comfort, that initial comfort, um, that is what leads to agoraphobia. Because mm. then we just... We're, we, we're, our body knows that like any type of pain is a threat. So then we're just not going to engage in anything. That's fair. I mean, I can, I can understand how like our minds use avoidance, like I was saying, as a reward system. And so we just don't engage and don't do things. And it's also difficult because like the human experience is so multifaceted. Like when I worked from home for a number of years and then I went back to working not at home, like out in the world or in brick and mortar, whatever you want to call it. One of my first thoughts was like, Ugh, I have to work with people like I just didn't want to do it because I was so used to like being on my own and being independent and doing things and accom- very, you know, much accomplished and having value and input and, you know that type of stuff. But I was like, I just didn't want to deal with personalities and different stuff like that. So it's kind of comical to me, like to be back working for a number of years now (laughs) with, with people all the time and seeing them. And I've talked about it recently with a friend of mine. I was like, as much as we might want to avoid going into the office or being around people, especially certain people who really challenge us because of their personality, their actions, whatever that is, it's healthy for us because it's exposure. And like, I kind of think of it from a public health perspective. If you intend to never like interact with the world to avoid disease, then you will literally have to live in a bubble. (laughs) Yes. And even then there's no guarantee. Yep. So I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, you should expose yourself to everything, but there's something to be said, I guess, for like, recognizing the benefits and perhaps in moderation. Yeah. The, um, uh, I really like that you just said that, um, because, uh, part of the thing with, um, experiential avoidance is the difference between tolerance and acceptance. Um, that like the goal isn't for us to tolerate these painful experiences. The goal is for us to accept that they're actually happening. Right. So like, um, you know, with your example, right, that like, you know, um, you know, when we are interacting with the world around us, right, like, there are going to be people that we don't like. Um, But the goal isn't to like, just tolerate people. It's the goal is to like, accept that, like, we're not going to like everybody. (laughs) Right. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And some people are jerks. Um, uh, And that, that's going to happen. Right. Um, that is, that is okay. Um, I can make room for that. I can make room for jerks today. Just today though. Yeah. Just for today. Tomorrow's another day. We'll deal with that tomorrow. Um, but like, uh, you know, to, so there's another concept that I like to use with, um, with, you know, myself and people that I work with is this idea of like workability, meaning that like, um, 
you know, a lot of times these feelings that we have, these thoughts that we have, um, these emotions that we have are true, right? Sometimes people are jerks, right? Sometimes people are, um, you know, sometimes there are things that are really, really scary. Um, but like us not doing it, is that getting us to where we want to go? Right? Are we are we being the person that we want to that we want to be? So to go back to that conversation about what is a responsible adult, right? It's somebody who's living by their values. So like you know, if I can, um, if I really want to do this one thing, um, but like I'm not doing it because I'm so scared about what's going to happen, then I'm not really living by my values. I'm not being a res- I'm not being responsible to myself. Um, So, you know, then it doesn't become a question of whether the thoughts are right or wrong um, or right or, you know, true or untrue. Then it becomes uh, a question of um, is are these actions that I'm taking helpful or unhelpful? Mm. Is this helping me live the life that I want to live? Fair. Um. So to give an example, a personal example, so in 2023, my company, EAC Therapy, um, I wanted to um, move completely independent because I work through a, um, a group practice. Um, so I, I wanted to become independent. I wanted to get credentialed with insurance companies, and I wanted to get my certification in sex therapy. Um, And um, I didn't because getting credentialed with insurance companies is really, uh, there are a lot of hoops to jump through um, and it's confusing um, and it's, it can be scary and they could at the end of it say, nope, we don't want you. Um, Mm. But, and then also with this certification for sex therapy, the application was really hard, (laughs) right? And um, it, again, a lot of hoops to jump through and a lot of moving parts. So, um, I got all the way to the end of that. And then I had to like, just send an email to like two people asking for something. And I didn't, mm-hmm. um, and also with my, with getting credentialed with insurance companies, I was like, no, I have so many other things to do. Um, I'll just put that off. Um, and I did. And then what ended up happening is, um, you know, my revenue didn't do it. I didn't do as well as I could have done if I would have um, went out independently. Um, so, you know, if I value the financial future of my private practice, right? Like this is something that is going to be, you know, helpful for me, you know, so something responsible for me would be to do this. So at the end of 2023, I said, all right, that's it. I'm done. So, um, so I have started that process and it's, oh my gosh, it's so complicated. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's, it's really hard. Um, but I just keep on reminding myself that like, that like, these are the goals that I have set for myself. And these are the things that are really, that I think are going to be really important for me to take my company to the next step. Um, So it's worth it for me to jump through these hoops, if that's going to get me to where I want to go. Also, one of the universities that I work with is like, hey, we really need you to get your certification. Um, so I got that nice little push. Okay. Um, but you know, I was unwilling to really make room for all of the anxiety and the fear that came along with this, like these thoughts of failure. Um, when it came to, uh, this process. I appreciate you like sharing that. I think that's what people don't understand is that there can be like, these are goals for your business and that they will benefit you. And yet 
like there can be a perception of like being overwhelmed it's like too much to accomplish or to be completed which is ironic because as i'm listening to you and i'm like well surely you're not the first person to ever do this so it's possible to do it mm-hmm. and i'm not cast i'm not saying that like to chastise you or whatever but like it, it is in it i find it insightful you know how the brain works and we have like our inner voice or whatever you want to call it that like kind of convinces us of certain things that you know um could you do the laundry do the dishes dust clean up take out the trash sure or you could watch youtube or you could watch twitch streaming you could play a game you could like you know jack off and watch porn like you know there there's these (laughs) there's these things you know that are much more alluring and may have a much more immediate gratification effect and give you the serotonin boost. And so, you know, it's no wonder that people put off things because we have, we've manifested all these reward things within our lives. Yeah. And, um, you know, at some point, right. It's like, you know, um, like heal thyself, doctor, heal thyself, <laughs> right? Because, you know, I sit in sessions with clients and I'm, I'm helping them with their avoidance and helping them uh, accomplish their goals. And I'm like, man, I'm like a hypocrite. I'm not taking my own, my own suggestions right here. Uh, and uh, and that's why I will sometimes say to my clients, I'm like, listen, you help me more than more than you know, right? Like, you know, seeing you get up the courage um, to like take at least just one step towards these things that you walked in here to want to do just gives me the the courage, the validation that like I can do it too. Um, and there is kind of like what you said before that, you know, there are a bunch of therapists who do this. Um, But like you said, like the mind will, you know, it doesn't want to feel pain. It doesn't, it doesn't want us to feel pain. So it will, it does a really good job of saying you're fine where you are. (laughs) Right. Um, You don't, you don't need that. (laughs) Or like the, 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 uh, perpetual delay like well i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it next week i'll do it next month like but like you know and the next thing you know you look around and you're like oh that that was five years ago yeah like surely it can't be you know because you know the the days blend together time passes and you're not you can't you're constantly reprioritizing and like I know that I've been guilty of that. There are things in my life significantly that I've like not specifically done that I've had on a on a to do list for quite some time. And these aren't like necessarily adulting things, although I know accomplishing them and doing them will benefit me. So it's like, where do you how do you figure that out? But that goes back to the point of you know how you accomplish stuff or what you make a focus. And, Well, the other thing that I was thinking is that when it comes to, say, being a responsible adult, that it's contextual, right? So, like, Mm -hmm. what what is responsible to me um, is not going to be responsible to somebody else. So, like, there may be another therapist out there who does this. That doesn't mean that I have to, right? Um, But if I am evaluating um, and prioritizing – you know, my own business goals that are my own, I have to be honest with myself about what I'm going to need to do in order to get there, right? Um, And sometimes that is like, you know, I, you know, it it would be in my best interest to do this, that would be responsible to not only me, but to my clients as well. Um, So, you know, and that's kind of what's pushing me is, I want to be responsible to my students. I want to be responsible to my clients and I want to be responsible 
to me um, so that, you know, I didn't go to school for however long um, to not take myself seriously. I'm d- I would absolutely be doing myself a disservice not to do this. This right. wouldn't be responsible to me. I need to do laundry. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that's the difficulty. But it's so is, cold is... right now. Well, I'll wait until it gets warmer. Exactly. Well, and I think, but that's an example of one of those things we were talking about earlier. I think that's like sort of a mundane task. Like there is always going to be dishes to do, always laundry to do, like always like trash to be taken out um hygiene things like and like i think like the human experience for some of us is constantly this this teeter-totter battle like tug of war thing of like you know well do i have to do it today or can i you know do it later or tomorrow or whatever you know and it's ironic especially to me being a a single person who lives alone at home i don't have any responsibility to anybody really but me for the most part so, like, not getting the dishes washed is not technically the end of anything. And yet, it definitely is more beneficial to do them because then I'm reducing potential, like, biohazard situations for myself in the future. You know, if I let bacteria and mold and whatever get, you know, out of hand and stuff. So it it, it is this, like, thing that I think people don't necessarily focus on or think about especially for them if they do not have that experience i think some people are much better at just looking at things and recognizing and being like this is a thing needs to be done and they just do it end of story yeah um well so i have this so something that has really worked for me um in my life um especially with some of those like mundane tasks um, that like are just never going to not be done um, is um, I like to like put all of those things into like one uh, process, right? So like, let's um, let's get all of them, them done in one fail swoop. So um there is this method that um, really got me through grad school called the bullet journal method. Um, And it's a, uh, it's an analog productivity tool um, that helps uh, a person uh, structure their tasks um, by rapid logging um, what they have to do. And um, the, I think the rapid logging thing is really interesting because it gives you um, a chance to say, okay, what are those things that I have to do that are just not going to go away, right? So, like, that's where you could say laundry, dishes, cleaning tasks, right? And you can make an entire list of all of those things that is, like, never going to change, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you can also make a list of all the things that aren't that, right? That are, you know, these are the goals that I want to do. These are the projects that I want to achieve, you know, all these things. Um, and, and then also you can make a list of, oh, these are the things that I just have to do today, right? Like um, I have to go to the post office. I have to um, call so-and-so. I have a meeting at this time, right? So um, there's this person, his name is Ryder Carroll. So he designed this, this method um, so that people can get into action faster rather than like avoid doing things right so um it's i kind of talk about it um kind of like a glorified to-do list um some people get really wild with it and it becomes like an art project um i just think that it really works if if you just do the traditional way um but have you ever heard of this Mm -mm. no Not, Um, not not this specific method but as i'm listening to you i'm like I've been a I've been a list person for decades. Like I realized that is how I accomplish stuff. If I don't make it a list, if I don't write it down, if I don't check a list, like like review it, mark things off, then I kind of one forget about things and two don't 
take stock of the accomplishment of what I've done. So 100 like, percent like I'm looking at this. Well, here's an example. This doesn't mean anything to anybody. It's all scribbled out because I accomplished things like this is stuff that I wrote. And then on the other side of the paper, though, is like some things that need to be done. And it's sitting here on the desk like and I see it pretty much every time I sit down and it's like, oh, yeah, see, oh, well, there's that. That's an ongoing thing. Um, <laughs> you know, like, like that's every single week. It, you know, there's other stuff that I'm like, uh, I keep revisiting and I'm like, well, I got to send a communication about that. And well, I keep pushing that off for another week or two. Like, but it's just, just the way I've discovered I need to do that. Just like I have a spreadsheet. That's a budget. I've been doing that for probably at least 15, 20 years now, because I discovered as a younger adult, if I don't do that, I don't pay that much good attention with my finances. And I kind of need to do that. Same. Um, Well, so like, um, don't you think that that would be so much easier if it was all in one place? Yes and no. I say that because I've struggled as as an adult for decades now trying to find this is this is a flaw i think in human like capacity okay because i think we i think marketing has sold us this this falsity that there is like we just have to get the right tool or the key and it will like solve things and i'm like i just don't know if that exists i think like one the solution is very unique to the person. Mm-hmm. So this one thing fits all scenario concept is just bullshit. And on top of it, um, I mean, as I was just saying that, it was like, it kind of reminds me of like weight loss. Oh, well, I did this thing. Like I did keto. I did blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, I'm on this medicine or whatever. And it's like, yes, but that's working for you and your body and your lifestyle and your whatever. And I feel that same way about like, like accomplishing things because I've seen all these different methodologies and like, so I have these little books at work that I'm like kind of journaling, but not exactly like, it's just me like recapping sort of things as I'm doing them and moving along. And what I realized is like, I need multiples of them because I don't like having everything in one location because I'm involved in a statewide coalition. And I found it difficult to go back and find those things in the one thing, like as a, as a hard copy. So I had to get a separate one just for that to keep everything condensed. Okay. So when you said that to me, I was like, I, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm a I'm a organizationally minded person, and yet I know that one of my challenges is figuring out how to make sense of stuff and put it reliably where I'm going to have it as I need it. Well, that's what I uh, like. So I really appreciate you saying that because that's what I really like about like this specific like method because it's like it is it just gives you a, um, like a base, like a basic format. And then it's like, but like you do you, like you do Mm -hmm. like whatever would work best for you. So I can see having like a, um, this is my work, uh, notebook, right? Like this is where I do all of my lists for, for this. Right. And, um, but like sometimes people don't like analog, right? Like, so there's a app, um, I guess it's, an, it's called Elise, um, which is basically kind of like a, a bullet journal, um, but like for devices. Um, mm-hmm. And it is, uh, you know, so I can have it on my phone. I can have it on my desktop. So like it is wherever I bring it. Um, so I kind of like that because, you know, sometimes I don't want to bring um, a notebook with me wherever I go, but I know that I'm going to have my phone. <laughs> Right. So um, if like that's something that I can that I can check, um, cool. Um, and but yeah, like that the idea that um, there's not just like one way to do this. There's a a bunch of different ways and whatever um, works for you. So like the the way that um, that I've done in the past, right, is where I have a 
um, a list of like, I, I, you know, I, I take my month, um, I get like a basic calendar thing. And then on the opposite page, I like really quickly list all of the things that like, I know that I have to do that month. Um, uh, you know, that are, you know, in my mind at that time. Right. So, you know, you're talking about, okay, COL, um, uh, you know, bills, uh, these are the meetings that I got. These are the, you know, I'm going to go to however many meetings this month. Right. And then I'll take that. And, um, on like another page, I will say, okay, here's my week. This is what my week looks for. And then I'll take the stuff from the monthly log and I'll say, okay, I can do this this week. Right. Um, and then as I go off, I like cross it off. Um, and that helps me be able to like fit stuff in where I need to, um, rather than, um, you know, cause I'll forget it. Uh, I think like you said, right. If it's not written down, I'm probably going to forget it. Um, and yeah, so these are, this is something. And the other thing that I really like about the, uh, about this concept is um in order for me to not avoid things i have to be engaged and i have to be mindful about what i'm doing um i think that's like the the biggest thing for me is uh you know when i avoid stuff i'm i'm in the future <laughs> you know the world is ending or i'm like you know i'm in the past something really feeling sh a lot of shame and guilt about something so I know that when I'm doing this, when I'm making those lists, when I'm doing this, like I'm investing in myself. It's fair. Um, so um, kind of like we were saying b uh, before about the, uh, well, how can I do, you know, I wanna get my business goals done, but I also have to do my laundry. So there's another um, method that I have done that has been, I think has been really, really helpful that I um, uh, have found. It's called the one, two, three, four method. Um, and what that is, is I break up all my tasks into four different categories. Um, ones are quick and easy tasks. Um, Twos are cleaning tasks. Threes are things that take a little bit more time, like maybe like a project. And then four is something fun that I can do um, kind of like as a, a celebration or whatever. So like um, when I'm listing all the things that like I may have to do that week or that month, I list them into these categories. So like, you know, um, uh, you know, drop something off of the mail, you know, whatever, like that would be quick and easy cleaning task, um, you know, do the laundry, um, an in-depth task would be contacting the insurance company about this claim or whatever. And then something fun would be, um, I don't know, watching the season finale of some show or whatever. So I will take a block of time and say, I'm going to get all of these things done um, do a, I'll pick a one, a two, a three, and a four, and I'll get those done. Um, and then I can take a break, right? So mm. I'm get I'm getting done at least four things. Um, and the I think the science or whatever is that um, if I can just get up and do something, and then like I've built up the motivation to like do something a little bit. Uh, you know, more involved, which can lead me into a cleaning task. And then, oh, well, you know, now I have this energy. Um, so then I could do something more in depth and then I can, you know, rest. I could do something that I want to do. So in this way, you're like, because um, I don't know about you, but like if, um, if I'm jumping into just like a big project, um, I don't want to. Right. Sometimes, sometimes I need a, I need a build up. Right. Mm -hmm. You got to walk before you run. Um, so I like the idea of, 
you know, doing something easy, then doing something like the one thing that sometimes I'll do before I'm doing a project is I'll clean up the space where I'll be working. Okay. Um, so, so that's just, you know, um, that's something that I've done uh, that has at least helped me with some adulting. I mean, I think that's fair that we, you know, look at it from the perspective of like, what is, what is going to be a tool to help me accomplish, you know, whatever the thing is. Um, and, you know, how do I go about that? Which is mm-hmm. fair. Yeah, but like you said, it is, um, it is all about you and like whatever's going to work for you um and whatever that is do that um you know but ask yourself is what i'm doing right now working am i am i the person am i like doing actions that are helping me be the person that i want to be um and not lying to yourself <laughs> mm, that's very fair yeah because I'll be the first to like rationalize and justify my actions. Um, but I'm not, you know, I'm not where I wanted to be last year professionally. Well, I think it's fair, you know, to, to take stock of that. And as I was listening to you talk about it, a part, like something that came to mind, Ed, is I wanted to tell you like, but look at the knowledge that you've gained a year later now and a part of me feels like you know now some of what's to come and therefore are much more equipped to accomplish what you want to get done um and you know i i think that yeah we can use that um to our advantage um to be like okay well that didn't work right um and you know that that now i know right now i have a stronger sense of the person that i want to be because of where i'm not um that that can really help motivate us um to do these things um and like you said like the um but i don't know like i think that sometimes the avoidance process is i don't want to know If I know, then I have to do something different. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, right? You're not wrong. Right? La, Um, la, 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 don't tell me. Right, right, right. Um, I, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm very, I don't know, I'm very motivated by information. So, like, if I know something to be true and I'm not doing it, my guilt meter goes through the roof. Well, I mean, I, I think that's fair. I think guilt is is kind of one of the tricky things because it can be very motivating, but also can be very like anxiety inducing. Yeah. Because you feel guilty about X. And then, you know, it it manifests and kind of feeds on itself. Well, like I've said in the past that that my reframe for that is, um, you know, let that guilt remind you that something is important to you. Um, And when uh, when, you know, some of some suggestions that I have, if if you are somebody who is you know, struggling with avoidance and, um, and, you know, you're not really, you can recognize that you're not exactly doing the thing that you would like to be doing is to be kind to yourself. Remember that like, this is, um, you know, this is a very normal, like anxiety is a very normal human experience. Um, so you having the anxiety about this, you know, I just let it remind me that like, I don't, we don't get anxious over things that aren't important to us. Um, so be kind to yourself that like, oh, there's something that's important to me. 
Um, mm -hmm. And be realistic, right? Like sometimes we can't jump to the top of the mountain. Sometimes we need, we need to, we, we, sometimes our focus is just that next step. So like, what is, what is, what is realistic? Um, what's right in front of you? And then, you know, be willing to be brave. Um, be willing to like, just take an action, to, like take one step. And if you fall, that's okay. Um, you can get it back up and um, try again. So I'm playing um, this. Uh, so I have clients who play Baldur's Gate 3. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a bunch of my clients are like, Edward, you really need to play this game. And I'm like, I really don't. <laughs> I, I really don't. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm like, I really want to understand your world. So like, I'm willing to do that. And like, I died like, like 12 times in a row. Um, and I was like, I cannot figure out what to do here. Um, but you know, I was just like, I'm just going to keep on doing this. And, and, and I was able to finally, um, past that but like it was just the action of me doing it and getting comfortable with the controls and everything um that was like really helpful for me um right. but uh you know it's one example but you know i think that just because we don't succeed at something doesn't mean that um it wasn't worth it um and yeah um, but if we can take those things into, into consideration, then, you know, I think that that will help us, um, build up confidence, right? Because, you know, we're not just going to wake up one morning and be confident, right? Confidence comes from a, a list of actions that we take, um, you know, and so that we become confident, yeah, and I think that's the the part that's a little confusing or misleading to people is that they feel that people are born with confidence or they just get it. You know what I mean? Like like they yeah. that it's not something that you learn over time and that you you know, develop. 100%. No. Um I uh People think that I'm I'm super confident all the time, and I'm like, no, <laughs> not at all. I'm usually like terrified, um, but I do it anyway. Yeah, and I and I think that's the part that folks don't understand about adulting is that like confidence is part of the game of adulting is like doing things. Doing things and acting like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. <laughs> like, like that's one shade of confidence. But then, like, what's weird is like this whole notion that you know people have said. And I haven't heard it said a lot. It was like it was a thing for the longest time where they were like, "Just fake it till you make it." And I think what a different version of looking at that, or another way to see it, is, well, the reason you keep doing it is because you will eventually gain like the skill or whatever the thing is through the mm -hmm. practice of said whatever. Um, so I, I, it's, I don't know. It, it's intriguing to me how that kind of plays for itself. You know, people internalize in certain ways like, Oh, this is, I can't do that or I don't want to do that because it's discomforting or I don't think I can accomplish it. And I don't want to be a failure, Wh whatever the, the stuff is. Yeah, the, the one thing that I, the one thing that I hear often is I'm not comfortable yet. Um, I want to I want to I want to wait until I feel comfortable. And I'm like, but like, you're never going to feel comfortable. Because you've never done it before. You're, I don't want to say you're supposed to feel this discomfort. But like, of course, this is scary. <laughs> right? Um, I was I uh, had a conversation with somebody before about the concept of of course. Right. Like just um, being mindful to remind ourselves of like, oh, of course I feel this way. Right. Um, this is scary. Of course I feel this way. This is important to me. Right. right? Um, 
uh, you know, of course I'm not comfortable. I've never done this before. Um, but, you know, that's not to say that I'm not going to feel uncomfortable forever. Um, Correct. But I will say, however many years, almost 30 years later, um, I'm still not comfortable doing my taxes. Um, <laughs> like, I do not like that experience at all. Um, but I think there are some things in life that are going to be hot button issues for you. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the things that you were just talking about, I thought was interesting um, is I think we fail to give ourselves permission to whatever, to not be okay, to be nervous, to be anxious, to be like scared, whatever that is. I was having a conversation with a coworker recently, sort of along these lines that I quickly caught that sometimes when we have conversation, they bring up a certain person and they give them space in their mind and they give them authority and power. And I called it out and I said, like, very politely, like, I don't know if you're aware of this, but when you talk about this person, like you're giving them power over you. And I think that really kind of made them sit and think for a moment. Like, huh? Like, you know, like they, I, I, I totally imagined they, that was not on their radar. Like that's not what they were thinking, but I was saying, you know, one philosophy is like the more that you focus on something, you give it power. And you let it have dominion over you. And that's usually what causes like your discomfort because you're giving away part of you to make space for that. When in reality, maybe it's maybe you don't need to do that at all. And I think that's what happens with adulting is, is that we give we make space or allow space for the anxiety, for the whatever it is, the discomfort, the unpleasantry that is like creating the decision of the avoidance action. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah. Um, I would just, I would reframe that just a little bit that like we're tolerating it. Um, the goal is to make space for it, to accept it, that it's like supposed to be there, that it's okay that it's there. I'm allowing it to be here because mm -hmm. um, like that, that anxiety does not have control over me, right? Um, I am bigger than this anxiety, right? Like, I like to kind of frame it like a house. Like, I'm inviting this anxiety into my house uh, because it's my house. I get to decide who's here um, and that, like, it's okay that it's here. Um, it can be, you know, in the other room um, as I go, as I do this, Um but it doesn't have to be like screaming in my ear um, mm. the entire time. Um, I can just let it, I, I can just let it be there. I can accept it. It's an interesting uh, analogy point because I think a lot of people will be like, no, I don't want it in my house. <laughs> like, yeah. like they want nothing to do with it. They're like, absolutely not. Why would I, why would I invite it in? Like, but, but I understand like, your point in the analogy is to be like, well, just because it's there doesn't mean you let it set up shop and take over the home. You know, it's like, no, yeah. you can you can stay in the closet. Like you come out every once in a while. You can be here, but you're not like you're not an, an obnoxious roommate who just wrecks the house. That's not what that is. Yeah, no, and I, um, we don't even have to put it in a closet. We can let it be there. Like, we, um, you know, there's, I say, like, the four A's of acceptance are acknowledge. So, like, you know, um, anxiety knocks on the door. I open the door. I say, hello, anxiety. Allow it in. Come on in. Um, you know, accommodate it. Hey, can I get you anything? And then appreciate it. Hey, I'm glad that you're here for, you know, uh, it's, it's good that you're here to remind me that this thing that I'm about to do is really important to me. Um, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for reminding me that this is really important to me. I'm going to be in the other room doing the thing. Um, uh, so, you know, I'm just going to go and do that. Right. But like, if we let the anxiety kind of, cause the anxiety comes with those stories, right. It tells us that mm -hmm. we're not good enough. We're not smart enough. We're going to fail. You know, all these all of these things because it's supposed to right that's its job its job is to keep us safe 
Um, but if we can just say thank you, thank you for thank you for keeping me safe. Um, the more that um, we can let our anxiety know that it's being heard um, and that it's being taken care of. Hmm. Interesting. No. Yeah. Hmm. So with that being said, are there anything you want to discuss as we're wrapping up here? I mean, um, I think the other thing that I didn't say is something that can be really helpful is just to talk about it. Um, that like, this is, you know, you're not alone. Kind of like what I said before, um, that, uh, you know, I thought that I was the only one who, who had a lot of resistance to like doing some of the tasks that I have to do for my job. So something that can be really helpful is um, getting an accountability partner, um, you know, you know, saying to somebody, um, hey, what are you not looking forward to today? I'm not looking forward to this. Okay, well, how about you call me at the other at the other side of that mountain, right? Um, and I will let you know when I do the thing that I'm not proud, I'm not excited to do today either. So we know that we're not in this alone. It's hmm. fair. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think the other kind of to wrap all this up that um, whatever adulting means to you, um, that you get to decide what being a responsible adult is. Um, you get to decide what your values are and you get to decide um, what are those kind of points um, in the in the distance that you want to walk walk towards. Um, nobody really has to has to tell you what is going to be important to you. Um, uh, you are the one that gets to decide that for yourself. Well, I'm that. adulted out now. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That reminds me, I need to make dinner. One <laughs> <laughs> uh, of those mundane tasks. In any case, uh, what are your adulting struggles? Speaking to the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, let us know. You can do that in multiple ways. Uh, you can do that over on our website, CubsOutLoud.com, where you can come on the blog. You shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 361-CLL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Hey, if you have a question for a future episode with the good doctor here, give us a call. We'll, we'll, we'll take the line. We'll have a Frasier moment. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow us on various mm. social media outlets, such as Facebook, Twitter, slash X, uh, and YouTube. That comes out loud in the appropriate places the URL. Or you can join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash COL. If you would like to know when we're planning on recording these shows and what the topic is going to be, you can check that out on our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. You get various accoutrements, such as a made to be shirt, sweatshirt, something, a hat, a mug, just a logo shirt, whatever. We got a bunch of stuff over on our Zazzle store at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Some of those designs were designed by Smash. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smash and Bear. You can also become a patron of us. We thank all of our patrons at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud, where you can get early access to the show, including the pre and post shows, uh, if you can't make it live. You can also send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud and find us on the all of the podcasting platforms. Please rate us or review us there. The more you rate us and review us, the more we get up in the algorithm. Also, speaking of algorithm, 
If you like the show, and especially if you're watching it on YouTube, click that like button. Also subscribe. You can find me anywhere in the internet as box at box poppy box cub box. Something out of their Gary. If you're lighting in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gare Bear73. And uh, to the dear doctor, where can folks find you? Well, you can find me on Facebook at Edward AC, and I'm on Instagram at um, uh, Dr. Unicub underscore sex brain wizard. Um, and then you can also find me on TikTok as just Dr. Unicub 79. And um, uh, I'm also on the tweet um, or the X uh, at uh, uh, Dr. Unicub um, after dark, um, but just send me a message. Uh, but I know it's you and not a client or a family member. Nobody mm-hmm. needs to see that. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. <laughs>